Hi everyone, welcome back to Cooking with the Library. We took a little bit of a break, but we're back. Um, we're gonna be doing this about once a month now, not necessarily every single week like we were doing during the summer. Um, so today's recipe, we go back to kind of the no-cook recipes, but this one's a good one. It's October, it's fall, and it is time to eat pumpkin. Now, I'm one of those people, I think we overdo pumpkin just a little bit, but I love it in sweet stuff. So this is actually a no-bake pumpkin cheesecake. Still a little warm outside, don't necessarily want to heat up the oven. This is a great way to get that fall flavor without heating up too much. So we've already done a few things. We've taken some ginger snaps and we've crushed them up and then we mixed them with some butter and some sugar and we patted them into our spring form pan here. Um, the ginger snaps are really great flavor because it's actually not that sweet. It adds a little bit of that ginger flavor and it kind of cuts the sweetness of the rest of it. The other thing that we've done is we've taken some um, heavy whipping cream and we've just whipped it up into stiff peaks right here. Now you can use store-bought whipping cream. I don't bake a lot, so if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it the, the, the original way by whipping my own cream. But you need about a cup of heavy whipping cream mixed up. And then finally, we've taken the cream cheese. It's two uh, eight ounce things of cream cheese. And we've used our hand mixer, our wonderful hand mixer that we've used before. And we've um, mixed it up just to kind of get it a little bit lighter than it was when it's in those blocks. So the, just a final couple steps and we're ready to go here. We're gonna add in some, I'm gonna do confectioner sugar first. This stuff goes everywhere, it's basically powdered sugar. But, um, and then I'm gonna put the pumpkin on top in the hopes that it doesn't explode. Um, so then this is just a 15 ounce can of puree pumpkin, no, no seasoning or anything like that. We're gonna add that in. You can, if you want to, take a pumpkin and cook it and do all that. I think that is a lot of work and it's a lot easier to just do this. All right, and then we're gonna add the flavor. So that whole pumpkin spice. When you taste pumpkin, what you're actually tasting is pumpkin spice. So we're gonna add, this is kosher salt, nutmeg, and cinnamon. We're gonna add all those flavors in. And then the last thing we're gonna add is a little bit of pure vanilla extract. This just adds a really great flavor. And both the salt and the vanilla are interesting additions because especially the salt, most people don't think, oh, salt and sweet, but salt brings out the flavor in everything. And vanilla does the same thing. So it's actually gonna enhance that pumpkin and that spice flavor. So very, very carefully, we are going to try to do this without, we're gonna try not to make a super, super mess. We're gonna mix this up. Oh, there it went everywhere, that's okay. You're bound to get messy, it's all good. All right, so we've gotten everything incorporated. There's still a little bit on the sides, but what I'm gonna do is use the opportunity. So now, you know, normally with a cheesecake, you put like uh, uh, egg yolks and then you bake it and that kind of gives it that, by the way, I'm missing my towel, hold on. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> that kind of gives you that fluffy flavor that, 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 um, that causes it to rise. Obviously, we're not baking this cheesecake, so we want to kind of do that ourselves. And that's where you, you fold in, fold in the cheese. Angelique's laughing at me. For those of you who are Shit's Creek fans, you'll get the joke. By the way, our Emmy podcast, uh, we predicted it would win and it won everything, which is exciting for us. So we're gonna take this lovely whipped cream and we're going to fold it in. And unlike David Rose, I do know what that means. Um, and basically the idea is you don't wanna mix it in with the mixer because all that light fluffy um, flavor that you get and all that texture that you get from the whipped cream would just deflate. So we're just gonna slowly kind of mix it in, you kind of cut through and you keep stirring. You do this lightly, you don't want to over mix, you just want everything to be incorporated. So it just takes a few seconds here. You kind of slice down the middle and you kind of literally fold it over itself and that eventually mixes everything together. So there you go, David, now you know how to fold in the cheese. <laughs> All right. And this is a classic technique. You also see this done a lot with egg whites. They'll, they'll beat egg whites and add those in, that kind of souffle concept. It just keeps it light and airy, which is something that you really want with a cheesecake. You don't want a super, super dense cheesecake. All right, we're almost done folding in here. It does take a few minutes. I'm also getting any of those excess bits that didn't quite get mixed in when we mixed it in. We're doing that as well. All right, we are almost there. And what you get, and I'll show it to you, it looks like pumpkin. It looks like a pumpkin flavored dish, but you can also see by not deflating that whipped cream, it nearly creates a very light and fluffy texture. So now we're going to add this right in on top of our wonderful crust that we did. And there's a lot of sweetness in this, which is why I like, like I said, I like those ginger snaps because it's going to cut that. I'm actually not the biggest dessert fan. 
So I like it when it has a little spice or a little salt or a little, and in the case of ginger, a little pungentness. They kind of cut through that sweetness. All right, I used a way too big bowl for this, let's just be honest. All right, guys, and this is it. This is how simple it is. You just spread it out and even it out in your spring form pan. Can I get it evened out? And then you let it sit. So we can't test this yet, and I'm gonna have to hide it from the library staff because these folks would eat it whether it's set up or not. Um, so I'm gonna have to hide it from them, but you let it sit for at least four hours, preferably more than that, maybe even overnight. There we go, even it out. And you have cheesecake. It's so simple, you don't have to heat up your oven. You don't have to worry about egg yolks. All you have to do is whip up a few things and add them and you have this beautiful, beautiful dessert. So thank you for tuning in again to Cooking with the Library. We are now open to the public, at least a little bit. Here at the Main, we're open 10 to 2. Actually, all of our locations that are currently open, we're open to the public 10 to 2. We are asking that you wear a mask. We are asking that you keep social distance and we are trying to limit the number of people in the building. But we have missed you guys, and we're so happy to see your faces again here at the library. For those of you who still don't feel comfortable, we are running a curbside service at some of your branch locations. Give them a call. They're running them a lot of them all day, some of them only specific hours. Here at the Main, we're running it from 2 to 5 once we close to the public. Thank you again for tuning in with Cooking with the Library, and we'll see you next time.